Um, and so this is WCAPS anniversary. It kicks off today, August 26th. WCAPS is the organization Women of Color Advancing Peace and Security um, that was created a couple years ago by the amazing Ambassador Bonnie Jenkins. Um, and September 21st is actually our official anniversary date, but we started our kickoff today. And so we're really excited that we get to start this kickoff with our GAD Lingo, which is a cultural diplomacy program with one of WCAP's working groups entitled the Global Advocacy and Diplomacy Working Group, which I had an opportunity to establish this working group earlier on this year under the leadership of Ambassador Bonnie Jenkins. We've had a couple of these sessions already. Um, these sessions were created based off of the nationalities and cultures of our respective officers. And so session one, we started off with Spanish to represent um, part of my heritage, my grandparents are from the Dominican Republic, along with my director of diplomacy, today's moderator, Marielle Ali. She's also half Dominican as well. Um, our second session was uh, Japanese to reflect our communications coordinator. She's also half Japanese heritage, Sylvia Leon. Our third session was Arabic, which reflects our other officer's heritage, Christina Bayad um, from Morocco. And the final session for our August culture diplomacy is Haitian, Creole, and French, which represents my heritage. And so I just wanted to um, give you guys just a little overview of what AdLingo and cultural diplomacy program has looked like this past month. And I'm excited to kick off our final one today with all of you. Um, this initiative is powered by um, MTA Visions is adopted through our Embassy and Diversity Project. Our distinguished um, keynote for today, just giving us some insights into cultural diplomacy, His Excellency Ambassador Elbe Denis has a current emergency, so he'll try his best to join us within the end of the hour program today. Um, and if not, we thank in advance His Excellency Ambassador Elbe Denis of Haiti to the United States of America for agreeing to participate for today's function. Our featured speakers for today is Mr. Honora, Charge d'affaires um, of the Embassy of Haiti of Japan. Um, he'll be providing us with the highlights of Haiti's culture. Um, Mr. Half Onomono Onora has taken on duties as Charge d'affaires at Interim at the Embassy of the Republic of Haiti in Japan from June 2020. Mr. Onora previously served as Deputy Chief of Mission of this embassy from 2019-2020. He was a Senior Advisor in Economic Affairs in the Cabinet of the Haitian President from 2017 to 2019 as a Consultant in Economic and Consular Affairs at the Embassy of the Republic of Haiti in Tokyo, Japan from 2012 to 2015. He also helped the head of mission in promoting economic relationships between Japan and Korea and Haiti. He is an economist and a graduate of the Sant of Planning Technique and Applied Economics in Haiti. Um, he is also, he holds a Master of Research in Economics from the University of Antilles Guyane in France. And he also pursued graduate studies in economics at Kobe University, Japan, and in public policy at the University of Toronto, Canada. And before we officially um, turn it over to you, Ambassador Onoga, I want to take an opportunity to also um, give a special mention for someone considered the father of culture um, in the Haitian culture, um, Funke Tan. He, when we were deciding on who would be the ideal person to share culture, <laughs> He was presented to us as a potential speaker okay. and through one of my contacts in Haiti um, presented him um, as a potential speaker, but he shared with us that he's going through such a terrible time um, due to what he sees going on in his country. And also he lost one of his really close friends, um, Kope Filo. And so we said, you know what, we're going to honor him because of all the amazing contributions that he's done for the Haitian culture. He's rena renowned um, across the globe internationally. Um, he's from Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Um, you know, he's regarded as, uh, you know, the man with the, the prolific novelist, poet, painter. Um, he's also been acknowledged by UNESCO as well and was presented with a presentation of peace. 
on an international level as well too. So Funk Kitsan, I know you have opportunity to watch this segment. We want to let you know that you don't have to um, be in despair, continue to have hope. All the contributions that you made to the country of Haiti and the Haitian culture was not in vain. You have the diaspora and the Haitians um, to look forward to for the future who is going to ensure that we carry on your cultural legacy. And with that, we'll turn over to you, Ambassador Onoga, to take us on with uh, sharing with us a little about Haiti's culture. Uh, Am Ambassador, you are muted, and I'm trying to unmute you. Yes, so you. There you go. Blue human. Yes. It's, now I can hear okay. you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I say it's a very good privilege for me to to, to talk to you the, today. Like, as you know, it's a like two way. I'm in, in Tokyo right now. So thank you very much for arranging the time for this conversation. And also, I want to thank you for your interest in Haiti. Yeah, because like uh, it's always a privilege like to talk about my country. So thank you very much for that. So now we, we we're gonna start about Haiti and this country. Like uh, they used to to call Haiti like the pill of the anti. Next, please. So. Yeah, Haiti is uh, located in the Caribbean, I mean, Central America. And it's a pen peninsula uh, with like 27,700 kilometers square. And like Haiti and Dominican Republic forms what we call the Hispaniola Highland. And the ha Haiti, I mean, the name of the country means it's a mountainous country. Next. So, you has, you maybe know that Haiti is a country where we have tropical climate. Like, it goes generally from 20 to 35 uh, Celsius, degrees Celsius, and sometimes it's a bit colder in mountainous areas. And also in Haiti, we have uh, rainy season from May to September. And also uh, in Haiti, we have a hurricane, like like next week, like last week, we have this hurricane, Laura. And also sometimes also we have earthquake, like uh, in 2010, it, it, it was a ma massive earthquake. Next. So how about the story of Haiti since in, in 1492, we have a uh, Christopher Columbus who uh, arrived in Haiti. So at that time, uh, we had the, the like, Spanish colony. But in 1697, a French colony started in Haiti. And in 1804, Haiti became an independent country. Next. So to become an independent country, we have like uh, many heroes like Toussaint Louverture and Jean-Jacques Dessalines. Next. So, I mean, what makes Haiti a, a unique country? Because like Haiti is, is the first independent nation in Latin America. Also, this is the first post-colonial independent black-led nation in the world. And this is the only nation whose independence was gained as part of a successful slave rebellion. So, yeah, that's why we can consider Haiti as a, a unique country in Americas. Next. How about the history of, and politics? <clears throat> Haiti is the Democratic Republic. So we have a president who is elected for five years and also a prime minister appointed by the president. 
the motto of Haiti is unity is strength. And our national anthem is La Desalinian. So our Haitian currency is gold. Now, one US dollar is uh, about like 118 gold. And in Haiti, we have two official language, Haitian Creole and French. Next. So this country, we have uh, 10 uh, provinces and the capital city, and which is also the, the principal city in Haiti is, is Port-au-Prince. The population, we have a population of uh, 11 million people. Next. Hello, do you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. You got muted really quickly. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah, we have like many historic monuments and touristic sites in Haiti. For example, the Citadel La Feria uh, is a world heritage site uh, in the north part in Haiti. So it's a very massive fortress. Uh, about like uh, located in, in in the city of of, of Milo. so actually this is the largest fortress in the western and uh, uh, hemisphere. So the citadel was um, constructed because like the Asian government at that time wanted to pre prevent from French uh, people to to. Um, from coming back to Haiti. So that's why we have the that. And now it's a, a historic monument that many people uh, want to visit when, when they go to Haiti. Next. Yeah, Haitian culture. So in Haiti, we have a very I mean, interesting culture because it's characterized by, by its large diversity. And you know, we have various origin like from African, Latin, Taino, and French. So this kind of culture, uh, you will see that like this diversity will be reflected in our art, our literature, our music, and our cuisine. Next, like about Haitian art. Yeah, we have many famous painters in Haiti. And generally, these paintings, they describe like na natural elements, like water, sun, and persons. Next. How about Haitian literature? Uh, the, the Haitian literature is like inspired, particularly from the re revolution that we have in, in 1804. So because of of that, like you will see that how like books uh, and uh, like many Haitian writers, they, 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 they will use that this revolution as a kind of uh, inspiration. And of course, like in, in our literature, like it's uh, mainly focused like on uh, fighting the colonialists and slavery. And we have many, many uh, famous uh, writers like uh, Frank Etienne and also like Daniela Freya. She is like the, he's the first Haitian to be elected at the Academy Francis. Uh, he's also the second black person to have been inducted uh, in this uh, prestigious institution. So many critics consider Haitian literature as a, a living art. Next. And also we have a very big part of our culture. This is the Haitian music. In Haiti, we have a various traditional musical types like compa, like racine, like chubadu, like rara. But uh, I mean, the main type is compa because like many young people uh, 
uh, dance this kind of music. Next. And how biggest cultural event in Haiti is the carnival. Yeah, carnival is the most I mean, popular festival in Haiti. We have it like uh, every year, generally in, in February, and it lasts like three days. Yeah, it's a combination of dance, dance and music parade, and also people wear masks, colorful cloth, and special costume. Next. Yeah, so Carnival in Haiti, it's more than a cultural uh, event. It's, it's a, an event that binds people together. So like in Carnival, you can see that there's a mixture of uh, uh, African and, and I mean, Haitian or French backgrounds. Next. So this is the like most anticipated cultural event in Haiti. So like many artists, uh, musicians will participate and it's a time to celebrate the uh, freedom through dancing, singing, parades, music, drinks, food. Yeah, and friends will gather together. Yeah, that's a very, very wonderful moment in Haiti. Next. So another big part of our culture is the Asian cuisine. Yeah, uh, the Creole cuisine is a mixture of French, African, Spanish, and indigenous cooking methods. So principally we have rice and beans as our main food. And also uh, we use like a, a vegetable and meat stew and like in countries like United States or Canada since we have like a big community of Haitians so we will find a many Haitian restaurant. Next. So yeah the Haitian cuisine is a bit spicy so as I said before our main dish is rice. So we have other famous foods like Creole Tasso, uh, plantain, yeah, uh, shumo. Next. So also we have some famous drinks in Haiti. Like since it's a tropical country, so here we have a lot of uh, fruit juice, fruit cocktails. We have also our famous rum, which is barbacool, and our famous beer, Prestige. Next. Now I, I would like to talk about like uh, languages in Haiti. So as I mentioned before, we have two official languages in Haiti, French and Haitian Creole. But like, as you know, since it, uh, we have two languages, so the, relation, the social relationship between these languages is very complex. So of course we can see that all Haitian can speak Creole because it, it's a, the everyday language for the entire population. But about like 40% of the population can speak French. So also Haiti is often considered as the unique Francophone countries in, in the America. So generally speaking, like uh, in political life and at school, we, we use French at the, uh, as the official language. But like now people, uh, are more eager to use the queer because uh, it's about our identity and also like since friend i mean creole we have a lot of french words but creole's grammar are totally different from from french and these two languages are not that mutually comprehensible So in my presentation, I, I wanted to introduce so, some basic sentences in Haitian Creole. So if you are ready, I would like to share that with you. Yeah, for example, we want to say good morning, mom. In Haitian Creole, we say bonjour, madame. Good morning, sir. We say bonjour, monsieur. 
call are you? We say, this is we I am good and you. We say, moi bien et où? I'm fine, what's your name? We say, moi en forme, qui vient où elle My name is John and you. Yeah, we say, hey, thank you, moi et le John et où? My name is Robert, moi et le Robert. I'm very content to make this. I'm very happy to meet you. Me too. Moi même tout. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. Since like French also is our uh, official language, so I would like to introduce some basic French uh, French sentences. Like from Good morning, we say bonjour. Good afternoon, we say bon après-midi. My name is Michel. We say, je m'appelle Michel. I'm pleased to meet you. We say, je suis ravi de vous rencontrer. How are you? We say, comment ça va? Where are you? Where are you? Yeah, I would like to have a beer. We say, j'aimerais avoir une beer. I'm sorry. We say, je suis désolé. See you soon. À bientôt. Uh, goodbye. We say, au revoir. So, yeah. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. That's all for today. Thank you so much, Ambassador Onora, for that wonderful presentation and introduction to Haitian culture. Um, we really appreciate you just kind of giving us that brief overview. As you guys can see, Haitian culture is so rich. And if you've attended some of these past GAD lingos, you know, our goal is to give you guys a little bit of culture, a little bit of the language in hopes that you'll continue to do your own research. And hopefully, I know a lot of you guys are security professionals, um, national security professionals, diplomats. Hopefully that you'll select Haiti as one of your countries when you're looking for your assignment or to do business moving forward. So thank you, Ambassador Honorat. I'm also gonna take this um, moment right now before we transition into the language portion of our presentation um, to honor some of the officials that I see that's with us in our chat box, um, I see that we have um, Minis Manata Teonie. She's the former minister of Haitians living abroad. Minis Teonie, if you would like to um, say a quick greetings, you can go ahead and mic up or share your screen or unmute yourself if you'd like to do that. Um, and while you're doing that, um, I'll just go ahead and um, like to thank my family, um, Haitian culture, Caribbean culture, we, we honor those that have come before us. And so I wanted to take an opportunity, if I didn't honor them, they would get on me. Um, and so I want to take an opportunity to honor my mother, my Josette Metelis, La Famille de Metelis, my father, Marcel Adonis, La Famille d'Adonis. I see um, Magalen um, Adonis here, which is my oldest sister. Thank you, sis, for joining us today. Um, with that, um, we will go into the chat. So this is an opportunity, right here, we usually give you guys an opportunity to quickly interact. Hello. Um, so Hello, we, can you hear me? We, um, Minis? Yes. Okay. Um, um, so what we do during this time is give you guys an opportunity to do a quick interaction so we get to know who's here. And so far I've seen in the chat, um, Sylvia Leon, our GAD Connections Coordinator has been in this chat engaging with all of you. You guys are calling in from everywhere and joining in from everywhere from Atlanta, um, to Florida, to California, to even Haiti um, as well. Um, so thanks so much for joining from everywhere. Um, Minis Teonier, I'll give you an yes. opportunity for a okay. brief 30 e second e greeting. Thank you for okay. joining today. E yes, Raisa, thank you. This is really a great initiative. Really, it is. Th and thank you for inviting me and it is an honor to be among you today. And this is really a good work. Okay, thank you so much, um, mm -hmm. Nini um, if there, I also want to um, point a privilege for Ambassador Bonnie Jenkins. She is the founder of Women of Color Advancing Peace and Security. Ambassador Jenkins, if you would like to um, just give us a quick greetings as well too, I'll turn it over to you. Hi, thank you for that uh, amazing presentation, Ambassador. And of course, thank you to this uh, the wonderful working group, um, Ritza and everyone else. Uh, on the working group for for doing this and these great uh, discussions that you've been having and also thank you for doing this our first real activity of our our launch month uh, for our anniversary so thanks for the great presentation and i'm looking forward to hearing the rest of the conversation okay 
Thank you so much, Ambassador Barney. And again, thank you so much, if not for your vision, um, we wouldn't have this platform. So we thank you so much for being a trailblazer in the field of national security and seeing fit to start Women of Color Advancing Peace and Security so that the Global Advocacy and Diplomacy Working Group could exist. So thanks so much. So with that, I will turn it over to um, our professor who is going to be doing the language section for us. Professor Jean Leslie Henné, he's going to give us an introduction to Haiti's language. So, as you can see, Ambassador Onora gave us, shared with you that Haiti actually has two official languages, Haitian Creole and French. And so, Professor Rene is going to give us a little introduction to both. Just a little bit about Professor um, Leslie Henné. He's originally from Puerto Prince, IT. He has over 35 years of his life, has contributed to the field of education. So, thanks so much. Um, Professor for your commitment to education. The professor also serves as a director of the Haitian Creole Language Institute in Culture at UMB and also serves as an instructor with uh, Haitian Creole instructor for Harvard University. Um, he has devoted himself to women empowerment as well too. He supports the Haitian women professionals in Boston. Um, professor his lovely wife is also an educator. She's a woman rights advocate and also served as an executive director of the Haitian Women's in Boston. And he has a wonderful son who is practicing health informatics and one daughter studying pre-med with a concentration in neuroscience at Harvard University. Welcome, Professor um, Leslie Rene. And in Haitian culture, they refer they usually refer by the middle name. And so if you don't hear me saying Professor Rene, it's because he would rather prefer to go by Professor Leslie. Um, so Professor Leslie, I'm turning the, pre the language presentation over to you. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you so much for the presentation. And you said uh, preferred, um, you know, way to address me, Professor Leslie. I mean, actually, just Leslie would do even better because it would give that sense of closeness, I guess. But that's cool. <laughs> but I, I want to start with a disclaimer. Uh, I want to say very quickly that I am in no way associated with uh, the political dimension of that event. And if anything, I tend to be critical of uh, official politics in Haiti and probably around the world too. But in any case, I would like to do that. But then that being said, let's just kind of move on. Um, there is no way uh, one could do justice, I think, to Haiti's rich history in a one semester course, let alone in a short presentation. Uh, so I'll just focus here on the language situation historically in Haiti. Uh, if need be, during kind of our Q&A session, uh, more issues might be clarified if there is time for that. Uh, but let's start, you know, straight with the language situation. Um, but uh, one need to understand, to understand Creole, the Creole language, one need to understand that uh, the construction of Haiti uh, under the yoke of French colonization started with a couple of injustices and inequities uh, very early on since the inception. It's basically right to build and nurture family, um, right to uh, right of people, ethnic groups to form communities, societies, and, uh, and uh, right of people also to live on their mother land, um, being transported force, forcefully, but also right to associate themselves uh, in a particular um, you know, space, geographical space. So meaning that uh, the slaves that were forcefully transported and chained and brought to the Americas, in particular in Kiskeya, uh, which uh, falsely uh, the, the Spaniards would call, um, you know, uh, Hispaniola. Uh, but but the, Indian, the, the indigenous people themselves, they knew it as Kiskeya. There was a name for it. So, and there was, on, except uh, the question of uh, exploitation and oppression, there would have not been a reason for renaming it. But in any case, uh, that renaming also corresponded to the situation of, um, you know, uh, preventing people from grouping themselves based on ethnic groups or anything like that, but uh, in attempts basically to prevent those groups of people to construct culture uh, communities, societies in general. 
So um, 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 uh, that's uh, uh, Patterson um, kind of have a, an expression for that. It's like he would go with slavery as a social death type of situation. But in any case, that very clear uh, attempt at preventing those people from forming community, obviously that was a failed attempt. Uh, for the Haitian people has managed to be one of the few new modern people to invent two foundational, fundamental cultural tools of civilization, a language, Haitian Creole, and a complex religion, uh, Voodoo. I mean, so complex that because, uh, you know, so many people around the world have failed to understand uh, its profound nature, and out of that ignorance, uh, they have chosen to uh, discriminate against it, the Voodoo system. But that's probably because it's too profound for most people to actually dig in and understand it, that they discriminate against it. That's my view. Um, but now uh, we'll let the loi, the spirits, fend for themselves and we'll switch to um, basically uh, the, the Haitian invented language, Haitian Creole. Some people nowadays kind of prefer to uh, to talk about uh, Haitians, because to them it more reflects the reality. But in any case, officially, it's still, uh, it's Creole and Haitian Creole. So if we could have, but uh, th th there's this slide here, so you could see uh, people, that, that, that's probably part of a ceremony here. You see people uh, uh, dressed in white uh, clothes and stuff like that. And that's uh, probably kind of a devotion uh, and worshiping going on there. But, uh, but on the right side, you see also a picture. And that picture is very interesting. I mean, at first view, I was like, mm, I tend to be reluctant about bringing uh, such a picture. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I guess like most people would see why I would have such reluctancy. Uh, if you see French, it's bigger and Haitian Creole. It's uh, a little bit smaller. It's pretty big, but a little bit smaller, uh, much smaller than French, it seems to me. Uh, although you can see I wear glasses, so I may not be seeing things too well. But, 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 but the key thing here is like, you know, my reluctancy would be that, well, I mean, actually in Haiti, Haitian Creole is king or queen, whichever way you want to characterize the language. Um, but not French, but of course that picture comes from a system whereby they probably use sometimes of algorithm capturing uh, the number of hits that they get on a particular word and eventually uh, the, the, the one that come more often uh, end up being bigger. Um, I, I would assume that's probably the kind of uh, reality that produced that picture. But the very fact that French, but I'll interpret it in another way, regardless of how they generated it. So I'll interpret it in a certain way. It's like French being bigger. Uh, it is a little bit of somewhat of a reality in Haiti, in the sense that French tend to be uh, social, social linguistically be seen as more important. I mean, it's like everything official that uh, you know people would do in Haiti, uh, it would have a French rendition to start with. The constitution uh, is written first in French and then eventually you translate it in Creole and then even in the translation in Creole, things get lost, uh, you know, in the process. Um, you know, uh, very important um, laws um, in Haiti are written first in French. Um, you know, people are uh, speaking in official events. They tend to go for French even when they put it a little bit of Creole, then very often you see they revert back to French or maybe a sentence will start in Creole and then all of a sudden you see code switching going on and then French is there. So, um, so then that kind of maybe, uh, this is a kind of a, a situation that maybe say something about uh, the reality, the also social linguistic reality as well. Um, so then I kind of like it too for that particular reason uh, because it does say something. But the reality is that, um, you know, uh, very few speak French in the country. It's hard to, to, to actually uh, characterize uh, the, um, the statistics on how many people speak French. 
you know, speaking a language is, uh, you, you have to consider a lot of domains. So, but in any case, uh, French is uh, taught in school and then French is expected to be used in things that seem to matter in the country. If not, then uh, there would be prejudices, there would be, um, you know, things that come with it that may, the outcome may not be too good for who don't speak French. And as a matter of fact, they are being uh, very marginalized in general. And then you would understand 90%, um, 95% basically of the country find itself in that situation. Next uh, slide, please. Um, so then uh, the Creole, uh, regardless of that particular social linguistic reality, the Creole has managed to uh, basically develop itself through all that um, with a lot of uh, discussions, a lot of fight from Creolists, etc. So uh, the, the, the reality becomes that, um, let's say very quickly around 1979, 1980, uh, the state finally, after almost two, two centuries of independence, accepted that very instrument that was created by the people of Haiti in the process of uh, going through um, uh, uh, colonization and slavery. Um, so the state basically officially ignored it. Uh, it's only around 1979, 1980, uh, although there had been other attempts by other groups, non-state uh, um, agencies, uh, communities, groups who had been trying to come up with some type of orthography spelling for the Creole language. So of course, when you have situations like that, you ended up having many different uh, versions uh, going on historically. So we're not going to get into the whole history of that, but very quickly we'll say that the state itself around 1979, 1980, decided that Creole will be um, a language taught in school and then come up with uh, a formal alphabet for the language and formal ways to write the language and uh, initiated uh, a kind of a reform, educational reform, bringing in Creole into the fold for about the first three to four years of instruction. And then the idea was that uh, for, for follow, following years, you would introduce uh, French as a second language and, and Creole would be seen as the first language. 1987, uh, given that there was a possibility of rewriting the constitution, uh, a constitution more in line with the democratic views of the people of Haiti and uh, I guess like the liberation type of elements that came with 1986 after uh, the Haitian people finally uh, could topple uh, the regime of the Duvaliers that lasted 29 years. So th there was uh, a clear sense that uh, a new constitution was necessary. And in that constitution, of course, uh, many people, the more progressive sectors pushed for the introduction of, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Haitian Creole uh, as a national language and then include that in the constitution. Uh, just that a little bit later, the Vodou system will be also recognized as a very important piece of Haitian culture. But uh, if we could get the next slide, please. So uh, now, uh, very quickly, um, I mean, I was reluctant to put uh, Creole and French together. Um, that's uh, basically because th those things, uh, they, they may share uh, a certain number of elements, particularly the lexicon uh, of Haitian Creole, 70, 80% or what have you, um, derive from French words. And then I say derive because in many situations, um, meaning can change and everything else. And when you put them into, when you consider other elements, it can get a little bit different. But the syntax, uh, syntactically, uh, Creole uh, should probably not be categorized as kind of a French uh, derived language. Uh, it should probably mostly uh, be uh, put under the umbrella of African languages. Um, the, the, you know, you have a whole bunch of grammatical uh, elements that seem to be more in line with uh, African languages. So, uh, and then so many languages as well think that 
uh, if you are to look for the origin of the language, uh, meaning that the first few years that those people found themselves in the colony, a French colony, so they had to kind of have means of communication. So French was there, of course, but also they came from particular areas in uh, Africa. So those particular uh, languages that they had in Africa would also permeate uh, the construction of the language itself. Um, so then uh, while words, it could be borrowed from French or uh, basically, and then over time, they would be uh, reframed uh, within the context of uh, the African mind, if you want to put it that way. And then eventually uh, there would be uh, more formal type of ways of rendering ideas, thinking for those people. So, and then that's how you end up with a Creole uh, having a kind of a philosophy different from French and a way of expressing itself uh, quite different from French, but we do have them here. So uh, there is a little bit of, uh, that's one um, a picture here that gives you a little bit of idea. So uh, that's one thing that I put down here. Um, you know, should just give you a couple of words and then um, the rendition in Haitian Creole and in French. So you have the, the English on the left and then the French on the right and then Creole in the middle. Um, so you could see that here. I'm not going to, uh, talk a lot about them because sometimes later we would come back to them. So that gives you an idea. So 30 seconds of looking at them uh, could be uh, enough. Um, one thing I'll say very quickly, uh, to read words in Haitian Creole, uh, you do that by uh, considering the fact that in Haitian Creole, uh, every single sound is associated with a particular sign. Um, the sign could be one letter, but it could be so there are instances where you have two letters that form one sign, but if, essentially uh, it is what you see, that's what you read for Haitian Creole, which makes it a very simple uh, language to read. It's, uh, you know, it's based on the orthography that you see here. Like for instance here, that like chair, I would say chaise, uh, desk, I would say bureau. Of course, uh, French, you would say chaise, you would say bureau, but you would see something very quickly here, if you wanted to do some kind of comparison, you would see that in Haitian Creole, we say the O and you see the O uh, ending it. But in French here, if you were to be looking at the words here, you see bureau, uh, that's for desk. And then a little bit you know, down, you see stylo, here it goes, here it goes. So you have bureau and you hear the sound O to end it and then stylo, you hear the sound O to end it. So all of a sudden, the sound O seem to be, uh, seem to have uh, very many different types of way to render it. Or I mean, actually this one here, that's E A U, it's, a, it's even worse. That's E A U that you put together to get your O, while if it was something like travo uh, in French, you still hear the O, then it could have been A U X. So you would see that Creoles seem to be more, uh, more logical. I mean, you have one sound, you have one word, you have one letter, you express it as one sound. And then you, you're on a more solid type of ground when you want to pronounce it. So, uh, but while in French, I, I could go on and on and on and pull words like that in French and then you would say, oh my goodness, what's going on here? All kind of um, different spelling and one type of, um, um, you know, a way to express it as sound. Uh, but in any case, so you could see the, the rest of the thing. So uh, maybe we could go to the next slide, given that we are pressed for time. And this one here, uh, we, we, we have mostly verb in this category here. So you would see the verb in English and the verb in Haitian Creole and the verb in French. I'm asking you to take a, a quick look at that list here. Uh, try to remember a couple of them if you can, but if not, then uh, when we get into the practice activity, you could always refer back to that page and then you would pull. So the idea would be that a, a little bit later, you can pull words from those uh, tables that I offer here and use them in a practical way instead of just reading them just by itself. It may not uh, carry a lot of uh, meaning or 
a practical meaning in terms of learning a language. All right, so uh, let's go to the next one. And thank you. Um, so now a uh, common greetings. So um, you would see that the, co the common greetings in Haitian Creole, uh, they seem to be pretty close uh, to the expression, to the French expression here. Uh, so uh, good morning, you have bonjour, bonjour. And then, so you could go on uh, down the list. Uh, I'll rely on you uh, to read them a little bit later and kind of uh, realize what they are. And then when we get into the practice section, then we can actually pull a couple of them and get you to say a few of them. So that uh, previous page, uh, most likely I'd, I'd probably as, uh, you know, like people to kind of refer back to them when they are in practice session. And the idea would be that we could ask uh, people, well, questions, I don't have a section here to give you ways to form questions, but I guess like you still could use it interacting with one or two people in there and say a few things in, in that. Sure, process. and also, um, Professor, just a quick point of privilege. Um, Christina, if you wanna go back to that um, phrases slide. Yeah, the common greetings. Um, and I'll actually turn it over because we always make sure we have an interactive portion um, within the guidelines. And so I know that we're, we're looking on time. And just to give you guys a quick notice, we'll go to about 2.15 just to give the professor an opportunity to continue the language interaction. But for those of you that are still with us, we want to, you to go ahead and turn on your mics. Don't be afraid. And we want you to actually say some of these words. You can actually get a sense of how the word feels on your tongue. Um, and we could do a couple of the common greetings. I see a couple of you guys turning on the mic, so that's good, that's good, that's good. Um, all right, so we'll just do uh, just two of them, just so you guys can hear it. Like Barca kind of mentioned, um, good morning, bonjour, Haitian Creole, French, bonjour. Who wants to try that? We'll turn it on to anyone that can go ahead and practice your Haitian Creole in French. Bonjour. Okay, awesome. Bonjour. Okay, awesome. Bonjour. 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 Okay. Fantastic. Just want to give you guys an opportunity just to test it a little bit. As Professor mentioned, um, towards the end of today, you guys have opportunity to write some Haitian Creole in French. So you can go ahead and um, continue, Christina. Yes. So next slide. Mm -hmm. So that's basically the same. Yeah. All right. So um, so that's, that brings us to the practice section, it seems. So, um, so let's go to the next slide and maybe that with that, we will be able to get into some practice. So um, the way it will work, and Maritza, you might want to step in uh, so that we could give di directions to people. But uh, what I did here, uh, this is a Google uh, uh, Doc type of uh, you know, uh, platform that we can use. I mean, ideally, people would be able to write directly into uh, the Google form, the Google Doc, but if not, then I guess like we can use the, the chat se a section and people could type and then um, one of our uh, precious uh, people helping would kind of actually copy and then paste it into the Google Doc if need be. But if you feel that where you are, if you have access to it, I don't know exactly what's going on in the technology part, then you could basically just write straight there. So uh, let's start there. And then so the idea would be that you write it, you read it, and then you, if you know so of someone who is in the assistance, you ask that person to translate it in English. If not, you just ask a general question. Anyone could actually um, uh, you know, just translate uh, that. So, all right, so let's go with an example here that I have already written for you. So it's uh, basically here in this page here, I give you on one column, I basically give you personal pronoun, and then uh, I give you the, 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 the English version, the Haitian version, and the French version. So what we will do 
we will just form extremely simple sentences uh, with, with one uh, personal pronoun and then one of those verbs that I gave you provided early on, and I told you that you're going to need to go back to that page. So if you have access to it, so that would be good. So then uh, let's start here. So my example was li manger. So can somebody translate that for me? Li manger? Translate in English? I he ate. That's correct. And yeah. as you guys um, um, answer, you can go ahead and just state your name and which city you're calling from and then respond. Marie-Pierre Belizer, Atlanta, Georgia. He eats. That's correct. Okay. So now I am going to rely on you now during the next three to four minutes to actually form, uh, you know, simple sentences like that. If you can go directly in there. So that's the same kind of examples that you have here and all squares here. You have the same type of situation. So just go ahead and then uh, anyone could just go ahead and type a couple of those um, things. So as I said, you could type it in the chat section and then it will be put, uh, it, yeah, it will be put back there. Somebody uh, with the organization would do that. Yes, Christina Bayad, our God direct program operations and external affairs. She's copying them over. So feel free and type those into the chat box and she'll copy it over into the actual document that the professor is referring to. All right, so we will take maybe six, uh, five, six of them uh, and what people would write. And then uh, we'll go back and get a couple of uh, translations of those things. So you're going to do it in Creole. So I would say that, uh, why don't we do that? Why don't we do the left side for Creole and the right side for English? Uh, oh, well, English, for French. <laughs> Okay, so right now we have two, four more. Anyone so brave? So basically, all you have to do, go to a list of verbs and then just pick one uh, personal pronoun and attach it uh, to a verb. And, and that should do. I'll reshow the... Um... Or else if you want, you can take the name of a person as well. Instead of using a pronoun, you can use uh, the name of a person. Reminder, here's the verbs. Yes, so it's, I, I could not hear the last person who spoke. Yes, very good. Thank you. And some of the verbs that we have here is walk, on um, Haitian Creole marché, French marché. Um, anyone cares to like try some of these verbs out loud while some of you guys type it in the chat box? And remember, just state your name, location, and pick one of the verbs to say in English, say it in Haitian Creole, and try it out in French. Okay, I don't mind going. Um, I'm Christine, I'm calling from Malawi, but I've been to Haiti before and I really loved it. And I just remember a few words like Sakpase and Kilaju. Um, I can say right, ekri and ekri. I hope I say that properly. Thank you. Well, during the next session, you'll be our assistant. <laughs> I'm Lakeisha Harrison and um, I am a professional lecturer at, at um, GW and they just went away. Uh, oh, I see. 
garde and regarder. So what was about what was it about Gadi and Regadi? So ah, by the way, right. by the way, remember, remember we say that in Haitian Creole we pronounce all the letters. Mm -hmm. So that would be Gadi. Gadi and Regadi. Right. Okay. And what would was the, the question or you just Oh, I was just pronouncing, trying to pronounce the, the... Okay, all right, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess like we've gone through that uh, for three minutes. So why not we do that very quickly uh, if we go with a list of verbs and we could have each person to read uh, the verb, one verb, and then uh, in the meantime, if people still want to um, enter a couple of more sentences, they can do that in the chat. But we could go back now to the slide where we have the verbs and then we'll ask each person to read one verb uh, in Haitian Creole and read the corresponding one in French. So who would want to start? Unfortunately, I don't have a list of names clearly in front of me, but in a regular class situation, I would, when people don't talk, I would call on some people. And you don't want to, put, to be put on the spot. So what okay. you do, you just start. And then that way, you know, I'm done. And you can always be forgotten if you were to make a mistake because you would have been the first one to start. So don't wait for the last moment because then uh, you would be expected to know it fully. So could someone start? Um, I would like to start if that's okay. Um, Please I'm Whitney. Stop. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, and I'm currently a manager in a warehouse. Um, so I'll try the Creole first. Sita and French, asseyez-vous. That's right. So it will be asseyez-vous. If it was like done in a way that would be an order uh, mm -hmm. in Creole, we say shita. So it's like to sit down. Uh, it's kind of an order. Then for French, it will be asseyez-vous. But if it's just like the verb that you just mentioned, the verb, then you would go with Staswa. But uh, if you look at something here, you would see already uh, the French version has a component of conjugation attached to it. While in Creole, we don't really have that formal uh, question of conjugation of verb. So it makes it for a much simpler uh, expression, a way of to express ideas without having to go through a whole bunch of grammatical uh, type of elements. But you should be very careful though. That doesn't mean that Creole is a much simpler language than French. I've been told that <coughs> one person uh, told me that, well, listen, Creole is a little bit easy. If I look at, uh, you know, the French or uh, or the English dictionary for that matter, it's that big and the, the Creole dictionary is that small. I said, well, maybe that makes it, that makes for a more complex situation because now you can have in one word, you can have many different meanings. So you need to understand context to make sense out of those words. And there is no way that a native speaker would be, uh, you know, at a difficulty to understand meaning of words uh, when they are put in context. So then it put a bigger burden uh, on the newly uh, you know, edu educated person in Creole. But in any case, that's uh, a bigger story. But that's to tell you that there are certain elements that seem to be, you seem to be able to do in Creole very quickly, but it doesn't uh, necessarily indicate that uh, that's a simpler language because it does have its intricacies as well. But in any case, if, could, could you continue with that? Uh, two or three more people? Reading in Creole and reading in French. Uh, we have Dr. Harrison in the chat. Dr. Harrison, would you like to uh, read in Creole and then in French? <laughs> I yeah. thought I was just adding my sentences, but, but okay. <laughs> um, I said, uh, moi danse and je danse. Okay, uh, je danse, uh, certainly correct. In French, so somebody else, uh, what's going on with the Creole version? <laughs> moi danse. Danser. Danser. Oui. So the Creole version, 
Mm -hmm. I, we, I, have to get I mean, we all people, it's an extremely efficient language in that sense. We don't waste things. While, you know, the Western languages tend to waste things. Yeah. You know, if you don't want to say, if you want to say danser, all right, so you use the whole thing. But then why would you then put dance and then not, don't do anything with the A when you're in actual conversation? Mm -hmm. Then that would be for the French people to answer that question. But for the real <laughs> version, uh, if we put the E, e then we don't it, use it. We don't, yeah. if we don't want it, we don't use it. We don't yeah, put exactly. it there. Yeah. So, I will get it. I will get it one day. So, <laughs> what do you say, Ambassador? No, I say like the Creole is like Japanese. So, we per, in Japanese, also they pronounce everywhere. It's said like Creole, yeah. It's in, we don't waste any word, as the professor said. Yeah, yeah. yeah could, could we have one or two more people? Uh, Marielle, uh, you were very excellent at pointing at particular people <laughs> and then get them to talk. <laughs> and you'll be my, I mean, I, actually, I'll be in second. I'll let you lead that thing. <laughs> All right, Director of Diplomacy, you got this. <laughs> OK, OK, let me try. Um, <clears throat> uh, Mouen Palais, and then uh, Je Pars. OK, so can somebody translate that? In, I speak. In English? I speak. OK, wonderful. So let's do two more. Hey. Run, courir, courir. OK, very good. Can we have a sentence with courir and courir? Je cours. And what's your name and where you're calling from? Mapkuri. I ran. Mm -hmm. oh, and where I are you joining us from? I'm joining you from Atlanta, Georgia. My name is Marie Pierre Belazer. Thanks, Marie Pierre. La familia de Metalis, feliz. Okay, so Marie, you, you brought something more to us here. This is the app. So uh, you can always do that in situations where the action is in progress. So it's just like the ing in, in, in English. So um, map écrit, it means that I am in the process of writing. So that's very good. So we use the app to do the ing form in English, in Creole. Uh, but of course, uh, I should very quickly tell you that the app will have other uses as well in Creole. But for now, let's suffice to say that we use it in that way. Okay, so do we have uh, anyone else? Yeah, one more volunteer or a professor. Can. Okay, what's your name and where are you joining us from? Nelson, and I'm joining you from Miami, Florida. Um, I'll try eat. I don't know if anyone that uh, did it already, but eat, uh, manger, and mange. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, can you make a sentence with that? Um, okay, I eat, moi mange, mm -hmm. je mange, or okay. je mange? <laughs> je mange, je mange. Je mange, okay, so je see, mange. You see, you, you're asking yourself, what do they, why do they have to go through all that? But of course, it's the origin of the language uh, coming from Latin and other type of languages that do have that type of conjugation definition. So, but clearly you can see that in Haitian Creole, we can get you started very quickly uh, and get into somewhat meaningful conversation. I'll tell you uh, for my practice in general, uh, teaching uh, Haitian Creole, uh, usually I would tell students the first day of class, if we don't use 50% Creole and then maybe somewhat 50% um, English in the class, then we should call it a fail session. By the third session, class session, uh, we should be able to get to 70-30. 70% Creole, 30% English. And then, you know, progress in that way. Um, it's just that, you know, uh, we, we would put things like that and get you to practice uh, the language. But of course, uh, today we don't have that much time to, to, to go into everything. 
But clearly, uh, you have been able to show uh, progress in terms of expressing in Creole. So now, I don't know, uh, obviously we're not doing too well in time, we're almost there. So I would say that if we could go back to the Google Doc practice um, um, file, and, uh, and then if we could go down, a little bit down, um, no, the other Google Doc, yes, this one. So if we could go down, and then now those of you who have been uh, practicing very well and tend to be very good at it now, I would like for you now to make uh, further sentences. So we would hope that we would get three more sentences. So I give you a couple of nouns here. You don't have to use my nouns, but at very least I provide a couple of them. I give a couple of preposition here, um, and, then, um, and then give you a couple of verb here. Uh, verbs here, so you could, uh, along with translation, but I give you those in Creole. So we're just going to do those in Creole. So if you could uh, actually go to my little space there and try to make a little bit, you know, uh, more complex sentences at that level. So I'll give you two minutes. Hopefully we'll get a couple of them. So if there was, uh, it, while you're doing that, if there was something in the chat that you wanted me to address specifically, uh, I would be happy to do so. But if you could highlight that, uh, you know, um, go ahead and say it because I'm not really following uh, the chat uh, to see everything in there because I'm so consumed. I, uh, those Absolutely, and I'll share some of the, feed, the great feedback in our chat here. Um, you know, Marielle just kind of shared that she's, she was not a fan of conjugation in French class. Um, we have also from, let's see who we have in the so chat. So tell her that we welcome her on board on Haitian Creole, <laughs> because <laughs> we're not going to torture her. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, Marie Pierre Belizeau was doing some a lot of interaction with Yokuri. They ran or they are running. It 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 cool. It's cool. Um, Marie Pierre Belizeau Omoto Omotayo, Atlanta, Georgia. She's sharing some of her experience and exposure to the language. Um, Christine Camamara. Um, she was talking about how she learned about this is more the culture about voodoo and how it stems stems from Benin. And she wished she spent more time to learn about indigenous faiths rather than dismissing them. And I'm actually, sorry. actually, yes, there is a strong uh, Benin Noir's component to it. But it seems to me that if you look at, and then that's what makes it even more complex than in, in most African countries, by the way. It seems to me that if you have a plantation on which you have people from 20, 25 different ethnic groups with different cultural practices, those practices are, I mean, it's like people tend to lump them into one thing, big thing, oh, African languages. Just like people sometimes, they, you know, they, they, they miss certain elements. So those are different things. And then you try to bring them together to form one big thing and to give one religion. And they had to, because they were on that plantation for many different, uh, you know, ethnic groups, and they were prevented from having sessions like that. So they had to do it uh, in hiding, but at the same time, they had to do it with respect from every single ethnic group. And then you would see that the, the voodoo system is structured in such a way that each of those ethnic groups has a particular representation there. And it seems to be done with dignity, uh, with a way, with a kind of, you know, uh, there is a lot of structure to it. So it could be, I mean, it's like if you take the spirits, so the spirits, some of them could be actually uh, from the region of actual Nigeria, and some of them could be from the region of Congo. And you go on along the, the African West Coast, and you'll find a lot of contribution like that. And that's what makes it a very complex system compared to other types of religious Okay. And there's another question, Professor Sylvia Leon um, shared that she wanted to know how has Creole become a language of liberation and patriotism for the Haitian people? So, Professor or Ambassador Onola, anyone can answer that question. So, uh, and I, I, I have you know, a quick take on it. 
Uh, first of all, those languages, uh, in general, queer languages tend to be um, to arise, emerge out of a necessity. You have a lot of people in contact, so those are contact languages. You have a lot of people in contact, they don't speak each other languages, and somehow they have to interact. So then they have to put elements together. So that's a contact language to start with, and that's the pidgin section. And over time, when you tend to have more and more generations, new children coming into play, they don't speak any other thing than the kind of uh, you know, components that you put together uh, you know, from many different type of uh, cultural practices. But eventually, those new generation, they only speak one language. So if they have to express themselves for whatever reason, it's going to be through that language. And of course, over time, they develop that language to a point where, because the, 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 uh, the, 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 the masters themselves, they are ignorant enough to think that those people are so ignorant, they're not going to put anything meaningful together. So then they don't participate strongly in the formation of that new language. They do in a certain way, but not strongly. I mean, it's like their words are being heard by the slaves being put together, but they don't really get deep into the construction, the kind of structure uh, that I was talking about, African structure being put in the language. Like for instance, if I say uh, the table, tabla, so the article is being put after the word, the noun, and you could go on and on, you'll find a lot of those structures, mostly from Africa. And then so after a while, um, it, it takes a master uh, very devoted to understand what's going on in his or her plantation, to understand what kind of uh, conversations that those people are having on a regular basis. Because you would have missed a whole bunch of elements in the formation of the language. And that's the reason why then when it comes to moment when the people have to kind of conspire, um, organize themselves against the system. Now they could be talking in ways that would not be understood by the masters. But uh, so that would be one way historically to explain it. You could go on and on along that line, but also it is a liberating type of language as well, even in modern times, because what had been, um, uh, I mean, I, I, we would say that for instance, very quickly, for instance, in the seventies, early eighties, uh, the Haitian people reclaimed the language and expressed itself in a way that would be uh, very kind of um, opposing the system itself that wanted for control purposes, domination purposes, use French as an element, I mean, it's a, to marginalize populations. So if you don't speak French, you go to a public administration, then the likelihood that you would receive services properly, it's very slim, if any at all. But then if you reclaim the language and put the language at the forefront, then now it's a matter of action from you to go to that administration and then speak Creole and expect people to speak to you in that Creole because you reclaim the language and you reimpose the language on the uh, social linguistic type of situation that's going on in the, in, in the country. So in that way, it is a liberating element as well. Now you would see that political parties, uh, movements that are questioning the system will put uh, Creole at the forefront. They will express themselves in Creole, they will distribute flyers or what have you, pamphlets, everything in Creole. But also other elements also would have to join. And you would see that with uh, the, the, the other religion uh, coming in, uh, the Protestant, um, 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 uh, uh, Catholic, etc. they would start slowly but surely integrating languages. And the Protestants themselves, they've been uh, very good at using Haitian Creole so that they could actually reach the masses because they realize that that's where you go and to reach the masses. So in that way, yes, it is a liberating language, just like Voodoo could be that too. But one has to be very careful. Any kind of, of, of cultural tool can also be diverted to its original purposes. 
and be used against the masses. And we saw that with Vodou, with the Duvalier regime, and we see that even today as well, there's a lot of uh, use of Vodou being done just so that there could be better control over the masses. And you would see that also with Creole. So yes, there is that liberating component in it, but one has to be always mindful of the fact that, um, you know, there could always be misuse of a particular cultural tool. Okay. Thank you so much, Professor. It was a very, um, very great discussion. And thank you for all the participants for hanging on with us as well, too, to learn so much about um, Haitian culture, um, Haitian language, both Haitian Creole and French. Um, hopefully you're much more interested in learning more about the culture. Um, at this time, I'm going to give the ambassador the opportunity to provide us with a closing, a quick closer, and then I'll um, close this out officially. Okay, thank you very much, Marisa, and, and I was very happy to be with you today, and like because it was a great opportunity to share with you uh, the insight about the Haitian culture, and also I would like to thank you, Professor Rene, too, for his presentation. So we learned a lot of things from him. Yeah, thank you very much for today. Okay. As you all know, cultural diplomacy plays an important role in the modern world. We live in a world which is very dynamic and complex. The speed of overall global changes has become higher than ever before, with the trend of further acceleration, which made the modern global environment even more complex. The strength of a modern country is no longer measured by the size of the population, territory, or economy, but by the level of the country's integration in different international structures, and by the number and quality of relationships, links established with friends, allies, and partners. Culture diplomacy has got another unique quality. It can help people adjust faster to the demands of quick and comprehensive changes. And with the increased speed of change, it is very important, especially in the light of fact and time of change of everything. It's easier to help people acclimate in culture um, whether it's they're going to work, whether they're going to live. And so, which is why it's very important for us as the Global Advocacy and Diplomacy Working Group that we offer this not only to our WCAPS members, but to also its affiliates. So we wanna thank all of you today for joining us and closing out our August Culture Diplomacy Month um, with Haitian, Creole, and French. Ambassador Bonnie, if you'd like to um, make a closing statement, um, just as Ambassador you mentioned earlier, it's our anniversary. Happy anniversary, WCAPS. If you guys want to follow all of WCAPS amazing events that's coming up for this month, you can follow us on all social media platforms at WCAPS Next. I also take the point of privilege to thank all of my team. We couldn't have um, executed a month filled of cultural diplomacy programs, Marielle Ali, our Director of Diplomacy, Christina Bayad, our Director of Programs and External Relations, and Sylvia Leon, our Communications Coordinator. And again, thank you so much um, to His Excellency Ambassador Herbe Denis for previously um, agreeing to join us today to share a little bit about cultural diplomacy and importance in Haiti. Thank you again to Ambassador um, Onora for your um, Present today and sharing about Haitian culture. And thank you so much, Professor Leslie, um, Director of the Haitian Creole and Culture Institute at UMB, and also a Haitian Creole instructor at Harvard University for that fantastic comparative view and introduction to both Haitian Creole and French. With that, as we know, we're all going through interesting times. I encourage all of you to stay encouraged, stay safe, and remember that United we will overcome. I'm Maritza Adonis. I am the CEO of MTA Visions and the founding chair of the Global Advocacy and Diplomacy Working Group with WCAPS, Women of Color Advancing Peace and Security. Thanks to all of you and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Au revoir.